Well, All right. we were, oh. hey, Lisa, I'm glad you wandered over with me. Look who I found over in this corner. Wow, yeah. amazing. We have Kitty Swing and Armin Shimmerman. Hi. So good to Hi. meet you both. They who need no introduction, but if you insist, of course, Armin know. was Principal Snyder on Buffy. Oh, and then that, that yes! other show. Yes! That other show. That other yes. show. That was actually my introduction to you. The Buffy. Really? I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Snyder was not the most pleasant of people. I don't know. Uh, it's one of those franchises. It's one of those franchises. And with him is his lovely wife, Kitty, and the lovely and talented Kitty Swink, who also has her Star Trek claim to fame. She yes. was a uh, Bajoran minister, so tiny prosthetics. She was Roseanne in season two in Sanctuary. And then you got to be a Vorta, lots of prosthetics, the full Star Trek treatment. Uh, Luaran is the Dominion War was going down. I forget the episode title, but yes. What was it? Do you know, Kitty? I'll put you on the spot. Um, I do. If I think about it, it'll come to me. It'll come to me later. Just what you want someone to throw in your face when you walk <laughs> in their party. Yeah. You know what? The prosthetics were easy. It was the contact lenses I hated. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Because they were thick. They were they blocked they vision over your whole. There were scleras. They went over your whole. The white and you had eye. to wear that magnifying glass over your eyes. Yeah, that was weird. That was oh, weird. oh, the that little was Dominion cool. thingy. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, I'm so glad. To, I'm so glad you've you're bopping in here uh, aside for have you now you've done some virtual panels this summer right Armin we've done a couple yes yeah. uh, um, they're not as much fun as a live audience but they're still fun yes yeah well did you do all we we tried to sh you know ship cocktails to you but they wouldn't let us so I don't know if uh, you I brought my own uh, straight from Quark's bar okay yes. oh Wonderful. awesome oh in fact I I meant to tell you this I I uh Realized I've been sitting on something for well nearly 20 years. Oh, it has been 20. Oh, that's sad. Don't do math. Don't do math, people. <laughs> but More for in honor years. here, in honor of today and our party, I'm having a drink out of, I don't know if you recognize this. I do recognize it. I was certain this is, of those. Yeah. Let me get it over here. This is, we didn't do a lot of scavenging, but when the show was down in 99, this was my one thing of Cork's Bar. This was on the shelf. One of the many cheap Ikea plastic glasses, but this is screen used. So here's to you. Thank here's you, Larry. You. you know, we were like you. We didn't, I didn't do any scavenging. Piece right up I there. was given something by Doug Wexler, uh, a piece of Gork's bar. It's a little, uh, a little something up on the wall. And uh, it's the only thing I took. Whereas Renee oh the, my God. Went, went with a tow truck and took everything he could <laughs> steal. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, well, <laughs> listen, um, we could, we've got plenty of Star Trek. We've also got folks, hey, if folks, if you're on the chat, uh, if you're watching us, uh, make sure and, and throw some questions in for Armin and Kate. We've got a, a, a good time here to chat. But what's exciting here on top of everything else is you've got a book coming out. I do. And this is the very first place that I can talk about it. Um, breaking news, guys. Breaking news. Breaking news. Um, How many parties have you been to? You can say that. Uh, I'm allowed to do anything I want now, Larry. I had to get permission, but as of as of 15 minutes ago, I got permission, and so I, I can talk about it. I can tell you where to find it. I can even tell you what it's about. But um, for those who are interested, uh, it's a three-part trilogy. That's what trilogies usually are. Oh, and um, it's the trilogy is called Illyria. The first book is called Oh my God, something of angels. Uh, 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 oh Lordy, what's it called? Um, something of angels. Um, we have it. Do we I have called it Lyria for so long that I forgot. I'm having to switch book. gears. Betrayal. <laughs> Betrayal, thank you. Betrayal. Betrayal. I win the trivia. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and it comes out, uh, the pre-sales start on uh, October the 1st. Uh, it puts together my love of Shakespeare with my love of history, with my love of literature and uh, and the book itself comes out on Guy Fawkes Day, which is November the 5th, which just so happens to be my birthday as well. Remember, remember. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Very good. Very good, Larry. Mm -hmm. And- um, Well, the it, something about the current political climate makes me think of Guy Fawkes a lot. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Oh, boy. So, and if people are interested, uh, there are various places to go, which I think Larry will put up on the screen at the end of the mm -hmm. interview, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we have the we we got the cover going too. So, but uh, along all those topics, all your interests and passions that you blended there, one of them I think was your ability to contribute to long-term projects. Hasn't this been like some time in the making? Yes, uh, this has been about twenty years in the making. Wow. Um, wow. I actually started writing it in the last couple seasons of Deep Space Nine. 
Uh, it was an idea given to me by a wonderful writer named Michael Scott, who I collaborated it with on my first novel. For those of you listening, Larry and I collaborated on the fourth novel that I did. And uh, he and I and David George all put together a, a book called The 34th Rule. Um, and we came up, you came up, we all came up with the idea for the plot. Armin, you're thinking of Eric. It was Eric, it wasn't <gasps> Oh, Larry. I would Larry. I would love to have been your co-author, but that was Eric Stilwell. It well, was Eric yes. Stilwell. Oh my God, my, but, my apologies to you and my apologies to Eric. You was but, Eric. But I have to say, when Eric lived above us in our right. the first place we lived in, you came by to do a work with them and you stuck your head in our door and, and my daughter, Sarah, whose favorite character was Quark, you just made her <laughs> year. She was gobsmacked. And, and now, how old is she? Say, never mind, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm so sorry, Larry, but you're right, it was Eric. You, know, you well, David, and Eric, yes. Well, maybe you're not yet, but we're senior citizens so we forget things uh that's that's what google's for what do you mean exactly that's what google <laughs> no i remember you talking about john d off and on over right. the the dr john d in this tutor ish era yeah. right yeah what's the log line for the book basically well it's basically or the trilogy uh it's a uh, john d is a historical character who uh was a renaissance man obviously lived in the renaissance but but he but he did a lot of things very well and uh and the, the, the log line is history meets Twelfth Night. Uh, that's basically it. The, the play Twelfth Night uh, by Shakespeare. Shakespeare is the secondary character in the book. And uh, it has to do with the, the, a historical... Um, You're going past the log line. Okay, I'm going past it. <laughs> it has to do with a, a, a historical uh, conundrum that was, what was, it was happening during Elizabeth's sweet time. Merry Old England, they call it, but it wasn't so merry. Uh, People were at each other's throats over religion. Gee, what a surprise. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the, uh, I will say that Shakespeare, William Shakespeare is Watson to John Dee's poems. Ah, there's the love. Okay. Oh, oh okay. interesting. And isn't, um, in the notes I saw that Shakespeare, isn't it like a young Shakespeare or? It is a young Shakespeare. Yeah. The only historical fact in my book that's not true is um, Shakespeare's age in my book. I make him about two or three years younger in order to fit my story. That's the only thing in the book that historically is not true. It's not canon? Wow. It's not canon, Armin? <laughs> Everything else is, Larry. Everything else is. Um, and of course, we have the characters from Twelfth Night, but and that so isn't, isn't true. But it is, they are, they live the lives connected to, to what we think they might live out of the play Twelfth Night. Okay. Wow. And I was doing a little research too. So Illyria is the island. Can you do like a little setting? Because it's- uh, Illyria, Illyria is- uh, is the island that Twelfth Night takes place on. Right. And uh, actually there was a place called the Illyria. It's actually what we think of as Turkey now. That was the, yeah. that's what that area was called at that time. Um, and, uh, and so the characters have to go to Illyria to find out if the, uh, the ruler of that island, Count Orsino, is being true to the, to the crown or not, to the, to the throne. And, um, we follow the investigation during the, during the course of three books. Although, because I've read almost every draft good wife that I am, Illyria now lives somewhere in the English Channel. I was gonna say, people are confused that the Ottoman, the Balkan uh, Illyria, it's different. So John D is a, he's a Renaissance man, but is there something, I, I'm getting kind of a, like a Renaissance-y CSI kind of vibe coming out of Exactly, here. although nothing that, that I have my character do is, is out of, the period. So there, you know, right. he does use things. He was a, a cryptographer, I believe that's the right word, for someone who decoded things. That is what he did and he made codes up. So that's part of what he does do. He does uh, have uh, a number of talents that he had in the, in the 1500s and he does use them during the course of my book. Nothing that happens is outside of history or reality for that period. Mm -hmm. But it's a very exciting book, and a number of people, including Ira Bear and Richard and Richard Rick Bergman, um, uh, have all read parts of it and have all been very kind about how good the book is. So thank you, thank you. Well, awesome. Nice. And is it come? Is it all coming out uh, at the same time? Each part of the uh, no, one book per year. Uh, all, the books have all been written. I, I already know how it ends, and I've done all that writing. But because the because it was twenty years in the writing, I think I wrote too much. And so I couldn't get it all into one book. I couldn't even get it all into two books. 
Um, so it's now coming out into three books, and every year it's there will be uh, uh, a new book. So it's like a TV show. You have a cliffhanger, and uh, you have to wait for the next episode. So wow. unlike Game of Thrones, people who get into uh, your actually, book uh, George is writing me a review as well. Oh, oh, great, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we won't we won't slander his name, but um, but but that's. <laughs> That's great news to hear that all three books are written and that, you know, if people read, when re people read the mm -hmm. first one, the next one is already done. It's oh. over the hump. He's rewriting yeah. and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. He sometimes spends 10 hours in front of the computer. So. A, a mm -hmm. writer once mm -hmm. told me, and, he, and he's, he's, it's absolutely true, writing is rewriting. You're never happy mm -hmm. with what you have, so you want to polish it up a little bit more. A little bit more. It's like acting. It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. it, you always yeah. want another take. I, mean, I did anyway. Always wanted another take to make it a little bit better. One more rehearsal. One more right, rehearsal. right. Well, and yeah. uh, what a, I've been in a situation where it's like you've got six months to do this major book that's going to be on people's I, shelves, you know, for 30 years, probably. And what a blessing to have that kind of time to do that. So, so we've got primarily a Star Trek audience here watching here at the party. Uh -huh. uh, what what would be an analogy for what would be some some strings or threads from DS9 or any Trek that would be, you know, that would that would carry over here, ping people's interest to, to follow John D and his adventure, this this trilogy? I don't know. Uh, um, I, I would imagine <laughs> um, morality, religion, um, uh, standing up for what you believe in, mm -hmm. risking your life. Uh, all those things are part and parcel of Star Trek and certainly part of my book as well. Um, uh, so there's that. And also, if, if I may, give a shout out to our writers in, in all the tricks. Um, you have good writing. And I'm, I'm very proud of my writing. And I'm very proud of the writing on, on the Star Trek franchise as well. So you have good writing. And I think that's really most important. It's, it's a story that is a, is a page turner. You, you will find yourself getting to the end of the book uh, rather quickly. And, and, and be chagrined that you don't have another book right away. And it's funny, which and is also funny. quite helpful. I mean, you know, not all the time, but right. quite a bit. yeah. It's not unrelentingly. Uh, no, 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 it's not, it's not history, 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 history. There, there are laughs in it. If you're familiar with Twelfth Night, there's some inside jokes as well. Oh, okay. um, and uh, I try to keep, there was a wonderful Elizabethan writer who said that the responsibility of literature is to educate and, and entertain. I tried to do that. Ah, well, I think Star Trek tries to do that too. Considering entertaining there, speaking of, and, uh, and educating, you two are both still very involved with Antaeus Theater. What's, what's going on with the Antaeus? Maybe tell everybody what that is here. It's an LA theater. And what's the virtual pandemic world uh, question from Aaron Harvey here? What's, What's coming up at the theater and are you making any virtual plans like uh, improvised generations? And well, before you start, let me just say that Kitty's one of the two artistic directors of the theater. Mm. Thank you, my husband. Thank you. Uh, so we have some radio Good plays team. called the Zip Code Plays coming out in podcast format. Mm. They're gonna drop on November 12th. Uh, we've asked the writers from our Playwrights Lab. We, we discovered that what people missed in this pandemic is the sense of community, which is one of the things Star Trek gives you so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And uh, how much did we like to gather at conventions and see each other? And that's usually when I see you, Larry, is at a convention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, we all miss that and our, our theater goers and our students and our actors all missed each other. And so we thought, let's do plays about little sections, little neighborhoods and communities in LA. And so we picked six pitches from our Playwrights Lab and we've hired actors, many of whom you guys who are, you know, Antius' theater is full of Star Trek actors. Um, Tamlin, Tamlin. Uh, Linda Park, Armin, Rhonda Aldridge, who played Madeline on mm -hmm. Next Gen. Dixon uh, Hill's secretary. Yes. That's Dixon right. Hill's secretary. Yes. You're so good. And, and lots of Harry Brunner, me, lots of us. So, because you've got to have classical actors uh, to do yes. really good Star Trek, as we know. So, we're doing these zip code plays that are dropping. They're free. Please, come, they'll be on a lot of different podcast formats and they'll be on our um, homepage. And Armin and I will tweet about it, so that's great. Mm -hmm. And we're continuing to do classes. Armin's teaching. Armin's teaching master classes that Star Trek fans from around the world have come to 
to join him on, which has been great. Ronan Healy, everybody from Star Trek Ireland knows Ronan Healy because he's just the greatest. Came from <laughs> Ireland. We had somebody come from Japan, Hong Kong, Afghanistan. Africa, Afghanistan. It's been amazing. Yeah. So wow. we've been doing that, and you know, we'll just we're just trying to keep creating things for the world to. Uh, enjoy during this time when we can't be together. It, it's difficult because uh, the pandemic is keeping people from gathering and mm -hmm. the theater is about gathering, humanity gathering together in one place and, and uh, going through an adventure together. Uh, the Zoom tries to emulate that and it does it as best it can, but there's nothing the same as actually live theater. Yeah, and well, we've both worked in theaters literally all over the world. And, and TS is the only place I've been where the audience and the actors and the designers and the directors mingle regularly outside in the lobby. It's pretty great. Oh, very nice. Well, we've, we're going to have to move on over to another corner of the party here for a second. But I do know just we've lost Aaron. We've lost Renee. And I know we've had a chance to talk about that and mourn both and, and the lossing. It's just this year has just been unrelenting. But I know both of you are very active in, in political things. And I, I, the bottom line here is just that we've been saying I, I, your message, I think, is just everybody get out, get active and go vote. Absolutely. Right? Uh, I will be ecumenical and say that I don't care how you vote as long as you vote. It is your responsibility to vote. Uh, if we have any responsibilities at all as citizens of this country, and that is to vote. So make your voice heard. Vote. I, I would suggest that you vote early. But even if you vote on the day of elections, spend the time, be prepared, be safe. Make a plan. Make a plan, mm -hmm. go and vote. Every vote counts. This is an enormously important election. And I just, I have to say that our health care is in the balance. Our, um, mm -hmm. We have 25% of the world's cases of COVID and only 4% of the world's population. So vote, make your voice heard, please. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I feel, I feel, uh, the need to wander to the other part. as much as it's been great to chat with you guys. So congratulations Thank on you. the book. It's so great. So great to meet you all. I can't That's wait to check out you. We the can't book. wait to see you live on stage. Thank you. you yeah, we'd love to see you. If you're in chat, if you have a Twitch account, then just say hi to us in the chat and and we'd be we'd be so pleased to see you. Great. And I can't wait to check out your radio plays too. That sounds so awesome. They're awesome. I think you're really going to like them. Well, we, and we've got all the details coming up here as we say goodbye to you and move over, but we've got all the info here for everybody. So yeah, good luck with the book. Congratulations. Grab. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you very Bye much. You lovely to see you. Yes. Good to see you. Bye. 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 Bye.